Straight to the guidance, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Well done on the headline beat. We've got all the numbers in front of us here. But to the guidance, 2021, low single-digit growth. Can you just tell me the restraint on that guidance? Is it restrained until there is a substantive vaccine and a more normal operations can be applied around the medical facilities of the world? Good morning. Hi, good morning. Well, to explain the guidance, I first need to talk briefly about 2020. First half, we had a negative growth. This quarter, 10% growth. We expect to finish the year with growth year on year. And part of that growth is driven by the pandemic response. We had huge, we have huge demand for acute care equipment in patient monitoring and ventilators. We expect that demand to be much lower next year. So the connected care segment will actually turn into negative for one year in 2021. All the other segments will have strong positive growth. In fact, in line with our longer term guidance uh, of five to six percent. And then from 2022 onwards, Philips is expected to grow five to six percent. So in fact, we are not lowering our guidance. We are increasing our guidance. We used to be at four to six. Now we will be at five to six till 2025. And that's on the back of Philips being very well positioned uh, to cater for the changing trends in healthcare, leveraging more cloud technology, telehealth, getting to precision diagnosis, minimally invasive interventions, uh, and people enabling people to take good care of themselves. Profitability will expand by 60 to 80 basis points every year in the period 2021 till 2025. And that brings us into high teens adjusted EBITDA territory. And our cash flow will exceed 2 billion. So it's, uh, I think, a strong guidance of a company that is uh, having a strong innovative portfolio where we can continue the self-help of operational excellence and growing the core and also our strategy around solutions resonates. We just won 11 big multi-year orders, um, strategic partnerships with hospitals ranging from Vietnam to Indonesia to Europe Fr to the United France. States. So the strategy is well received. Franz, I, I just want to dig yeah. a little bit deeper into the outlook. You know better than anyone else the coronavirus is making a worrisome comeback in Europe. It's not even influenza season. I mean, it's not even winter. How much is that playing into your outlook on revenue growth? I'm certainly concerned by the resurgence of COVID. And you can also see it back in um, elective procedures still not having fully recovered versus last year. And our diagnosis and treatment segment in the third quarter um, improved to a minus 3% uh, revenue comparison to last year, which means we are still in negative territory in that part of the business. Uh, because hospitals are focused on the acute care for the pandemic. But we take a, a, a longer uh, view, and uh, we think that we are well positioned for higher growth, even though we have to kind of navigate uh, the short-term uh, disparities in the market. Um, and yeah, as COVID rears its head in the fourth quarter, um, it's a bit uncertain, but we are pretty confident that we can deliver positive growth for the year on the back of a strong order book uh, and continued deliveries of acute care uh, equipment and telehealth uh, services. Franz, the, the shock that we had in September was the U.S. cancelled more than 30,000 ventilators. Did you find any buyers? Are you going to have to take a write down of any description on that? You said connected care is going to have a tough year in 2021. So are you talking to anybody about those ventilators? Have you sold any of them? Are you going to have to write down what's going on there with the inventory left over from the U.S.? Yeah, of course, the, the U.S. government was not our only customer. We had customers uh, around the world. But it is very sad that this order was partially cancelled, especially after so many uh, people worked so hard to increase production eightfold on, on the request of uh, uh, HHS. Um, we are working hard to find other customers for that volume. Um, but we did have to take a uh, provision uh, in the third quarter, uh, given uh, this uh, surprise uh, partial cancellation. 
on the ventilators in the, United, on the United States, there's a debate in the U.S., even a hearing, about how the prices for the ventilators were too high. Is that why the U.S. didn't take this 30-plus thousand bundle from you, Franz? No, I, I think it has, has nothing to do with that. Um, you know, at the height of the pandemic back in April, uh, governments around the world um, scrambled to, to take the right decisions. And uh, the U.S. government, in fact, made contracts with over 10 ventilator suppliers. And then I think the insight uh, post-summer was that um, the, the stockpile of, of ventilators was probably more than enough. And three suppliers, including us, uh, were uh, confronted with a partial cancellation. So emotionally, that's tough for us. Rationally, I, there's some understanding that if you have uh, a big stockpile, then uh, you also need to take measures. So we are moving on, and um, there's uh, plenty to do for Philips in other areas. I mentioned that patient monitoring is in strong demand. Telehealth is in strong demand. Um, we saw consumer demand coming back in the quarter with 6 percent growth, driven by personal care, oral care. So, um, you know, there's plenty to do for Philips, and we, we don't have to be just focused on, on ventilators. No, but unfortunately, the world is focused on, on COVID, France. I know it's monopolizing a great deal of this discussion. I just want to get a sense from you. You used the language there again that the world scrambled as we went into trying to grapple with COVID in the first round. Here we are. Europe's facing wave two. It's accelerating around the world. Would you describe the world as scrambling again, or do we have enough ventilators globally? How would you describe the situation on a global health level as we go into wave two? I, I do think governments are better prepared than in the first half of the year, uh, but we are already seeing uh, in several countries still a shortage uh, of testing, a shortage of uh, acute care, bad capacity. I don't think it's so much a equipment issue, it's also a staffing issue, and we need to have a lot of understanding that the medical staff is working very hard and that part of the lockdowns are to av avoid that hospitals are overwhelmed with the, the work. Uh, and we see that also in elective procedures being, again, uh, uh, ramped down or postponed. Uh, and that's not good news, of course. But I think it's a temporary uh, matter as we, uh, as society, is dealing with it. Um, and in the meantime, we need to look ahead and also work on our strengths where we can find growth. Um, for example, I'm very excited about leveraging cloud technology uh, to create interoperability and data exchange between primary care mm -hmm. doctors and hospitals and enabling patients to take better care in other care settings where it is safe and sound uh, from a pandemic point of view.